All right, welcome to today's uh, Vets Elite Daily Vlog. It's the last one of the week, and I'm gonna kind of get, you know, dive a little deeper into the, uh, like, like training-specific concepts and, you know, get away from the, um, you know, like, mental approach and, you know, kind of how you're living your life um, and those types of topics. So today, what I want to talk about is, like, some, um, th like, kind of like the, I guess, some theory and philosophy behind, like, my powerlifting program. Um the powerlifting programs that I write. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about like a periodization model, like that I've been using, um, where, you know, periodization nowadays, I think it's like a really bad rap. Um, and I think, you know, if it's taken with a grain of salt, like when I say periodization, I really just mean a plan. Um, like, like, you know what I mean? And so I'll kind of get into that, but I just want to like clarify that, like that this, you know, is different. This is totally different from the approach that I take for training athletes because, you know, what you're competing for and what your training goals are when you're looking at a powerlifting program, you want to bench squat, deadlift as much as you can, whether you're raw, geared, or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, within that strict movement, like that movement that has its standards, which we all know, you have to be as strong as you can in those at X body weight, right? Um, when you look at sport, um, it's totally like the, the interactions that are happening are so much more complex than move from point A to point B. Um, you know, like if you look to the basis of what, you know, invasion sports like, you know, football, basketball, soccer, lacrosse, hockey, you know, you are trying to get the goal is to get wherever the, the ball is in, or puck or implement is you want to score it in a certain area. So it is trying to go from A to B, but how that happens and the interactions and complexity in which that happens, um, that is totally, um, totally more c complicated and complex than you moving point A to point B with a bar. Um, so even when you're looking at, you know, the types of lifting that you're doing and how you're doing them and more about like why you're doing them and what you're aiming for in like training when, when you're looking at like the weight room development stuff and strength and force output and velo velocity, you have to remember that, you know, for the, like the patterns that you see in the weight room will not be replicated because they're not paired to a specific environment that, equal sport you also have to remember that the forces the velocities and how how these forces are applied in and in wit and, and, and how much time the, the uh, forces are applied um how fast these things are moving in like the length tension relationships um the specific movement patterns and especially that perception action coupling like that's not like what you do in the weight room will never be sport ever but you can do things in the weight room that will yield benefits. You can do things in linear speed training that will yield benefits that cross over if this crossover in the middle is actually is, is aiding in that representative practice of pairing uh, perception and action. You know, using constraints, um, just, you know, deciphering information and in environments to yield actions that actually get successful sporting movements, right? So that's a separate conversation. But for now, I just want to go a little bit into the powerlifting side of things. Um, and I actually, um, I, you know, after talking to, um, you know, looking around, messing around with powerlifting programs, you know, I have some concepts from Dan John, um, and his, you know, 40 day simple method. I have concepts from, um, Cal Dietz from his above 80% program. I have concepts from West side barbell, um, from their program. I have concepts from Travis Mash. I have concepts from, um, Christian Thibodeau. I have, um, concepts from um you know anybody who i see or a cool variation of an accessory that i see i use those concepts as much as i can um and it is within a, a periodization model or really it's just a plan like i just have a, a plan it's not necessarily a true periodization scheme especially with my accessories and especially with um like how i format and structure like my weekly format um but I do follow a integrated three up, one down and two up, one down, one up scheme, depending on the type of work you're talking about. And that's something that I've really found to help excel on, you know, moving your near max weights for specifically squat, bench, deadlift, um, you know, within four week cycles. So what I'm talking about is I usually is what we've been doing is we'll do our speed work banded work dynamic effort method west side barbell we'll do that work before we uh, of uh this of a, a lower body movement squat or deadlift before we do our heavy work in the opposite movement so if we uh 
do banded deadlift, right? We're, we're utilizing the emphasis on that pattern of, uh, of the squat pattern for power dynamic effort. Because that movement gets burnt out, like it starts fatigue, I don't want to go right into squats, so we go into deadlifts. You know what I mean? We go right into deadlifts, and that's when we do our heavy progression. And that follows a two up, one down, one up, while the bands follow three up, one down. So on that third week where our volume and our uh, intensity is the highest for the band work, we actually back off on our heavy work, right? Because like we want to build, build, build. We get the most out of that. We reel it back on the... Um, we reel it back on the heavy work, whether it's deadlift or squat, depending on the day, um, and also on our third day, which I'll get to in a second. We reel that back so that we get that super compensating effect for the next week um, when we're utilizing less bands um, or we're utilizing less dynamic effort, volume, and intensity, and then we're selling out. We're trying to work on our competition uh, squat and deadlift. You know what I mean? Like that's how we follow the scheme. Um, that's how it's been, like, it's been done. It's seen a lot of success so far. Um, and what's been happening is, you know, on that Monday, uh, is when we do squat deadlift Friday is when we do deadlift squat. Um, on that Wednesday has been a constant, just like conjugate. Like, you know, it's basically like, what can we do on this day that we can basically recover from, um, for Friday and not burn us out through the three weeks. Um, and what we've, what I've kind of found is some sort of pause, uh, specific positional work, um, basically maxing out at certain RPs working up each week. Um, then, um, explosive, like more like speed strength, really speed strength, uh, deadlift work. Um, so, you know, moderate band, less weight than we do on, on Friday, just for like our power development, um, we're getting more exposure to like getting off the floor, working on our form. I actually do opposite stance when I do this, um, because I think that actually helps more with my squat. Um, I have somebody do else do deficits because they actually helps them aid in like building up their deadlift ability off the floor. Um, so we knew we can switch out whatever. And then I've been, um, slowly adding, different variations of uh top sets and this has been conjugate we started off with front squat then we went to safety bar now we're on um hand supported safety squat bar box and i'm sure we'll eventually progress to something else you know um but it's cool to see how over like this plan we've been like actually building our work capacity as we go you know what i mean and especially in our um our high intensity work so like we originally were only able to do you know like it would be like week two would be like 90 percent for four sets of one and we'd be burnt out but now we're starting to get to the point where and this could either be because we're getting stronger and the percentage we use is a little low um because we're getting stronger or this be could because of work capacity um you know instead of us pushing like four singles and burning out you know we're pushing uh four doubles at 90 and burning and then starting to get tired so um Basically, in this powerlifting scheme, like, it's moving in the right direction. Um, that's kind of the, like, split that I use. Um, if you're interested more in depth, um, you know, take a look or DM me so you can get our, our free – or DM me on Instagram um, or contact me um, through email, and I will message you and give you our free sample of the powerlifting program that we're doing. Um, this At this point, it would be something we were doing about uh, three weeks ago. So you can check it out for yourself, and if you're interested – you know, we uh, will talk and try to get you going on something so that you can, you know, kind of see what we're doing and then buy into moving in, uh, moving forward on it. So um, that's it for today. Have a good night. Have a good weekend.